What do you think? Is this just an ordinary rock? Or is it a rare rock worth millions of dollars? Well, I'm asking because in the last video, we talked about famous meteorites, specifically those ugly rocks that can be worth millions. And when I say millions, I'm not kidding. Now I'm going to show you how to identify this type of rock if you find one in nature. So pay attention, because if you're lucky enough to find one of these stones, your financial life could change overnight. Today, we're going to test you to see if this rock could be a meteorite. All you have to do is follow these steps. Because here's the thing, if it's an ordinary rock, that's fine, no problem at all. But what if it's a rock worth millions? Well, it could be worth, I don't know, 5,000, 100,000, or even a million dollars, depending on the type and rarity of the meteorite you find. And that goes for collectors as well as for scientific studies. So I'm here with some other stones that have not been analyzed yet so we can compare and analyze them to find out if it's an authentic meteorite or not. If you found a pebble like this or have ever found one in your life and you think it might be a meteorite, you should do these tests. First of all, know that meteorites are rocks, not stones you can try to break. And for God's sake, don't try to break a rock you suspect is a meteorite. First, analyze the weight. See if it's different from the other rocks you find in the area. All these rocks that have been found are completely different from ordinary rocks with unique characteristics. But how do you know if it's an ordinary rock from Earth or a meteorite? Well, to find out, you can start by looking at the fusion crust that is formed when the meteorite enters the atmosphere. Because of the high temperature, it creates a burnt black shell, similar to an eggshell, half cracked. So you'll see that if you look closely, because sometimes it can only be on one part of the rock. And if you look closely at this rock, it does not seem to have any fusion crust. But that's okay. That's not important. The fusion crust can wear away over time. Think about it. This meteorite could have fallen to Earth yesterday or more than a thousand years ago. And in some cases, it could have been there for millions of years. So we have to analyze all aspects. Another common feature is the deformation of the rock. It is like a piece of clay that has been kneaded with your fingers. This rock here even has a slightly crushed appearance, which we call regmaglite, a characteristic of metallic meteorites which are considered to be the most valuable. And in this case, this rock seems to have that. It's also a very heavy rock for its size. And that's another thing you have to analyze. Meteorites are heavy rocks. In other words, if you take a meteorite and an ordinary rock of the same size, the meteorite can be up to four times heavier. This one is quite heavy and the weight is strange. And that's a point to note if the rock is heavier than the other ordinary rocks you find at the site of the meteorite, for example. There's also the magnetic test, which is an important test that you're going to do. But before we do that, we're going to do an experiment called the window test. Take your rock if you have one. And here I'm going to use some sandpaper. This is coarse water sandpaper, but it can be wood sandpaper or even coarse water sandpaper. Then we're going to take a piece of the stone. In this case, this piece here, one end, so we can see what it looks like inside. Because there's a very important feature that only meteorites have that we need to reveal now. And then we're going to saw the rock in half to see what's inside. So in any case, regardless of the results of the test, we're going to saw this rock to see what it looks like inside. Now let's do the window test. Let's see if we can do this quickly. This is sandpaper, which is very abrasive to the rock. The idea is that you sand down the rock a lot so you can see what it's like inside. That's good. Let's see if the inside comes out. And once you've sanded it down a lot, what are you going to observe? Well, you want to see if it looks metallic. See if you can see the little spots in the shape of circles, little balls inside the rock. This rock, for example, looks slightly metallic. We can see it, but usually a meteorite is metallic like the iron of a hammer, slightly polished. You see here, we have revealed the metal, but it could still be a terrestrial rock with a lot of iron ore. So now we're going to saw through this rock because this test from the window wasn't conclusive enough. We need to see if there's anything strange inside this rock that might indicate whether it's a meteorite or not. So we're going to saw off a piece of it for you to see. All right, let's start sawing our rock to see if it really is a meteorite. So I've sawn off the rock, and now we're going to look at the details. Here's the little piece we cut off. You can see that, although it's slightly metallic, 
It doesn't have any significant metal parts inside. So let's take a look at the piece. We're not seeing what we should be seeing. That is to find metal fragments inside, mostly in a circular shape inside the stone. The way I showed you before that reddish color that comes off, that stains a lot, is because of the iron ore. But even so, notice that this rock doesn't look as metallic as it would if I had cut a metal bar, for example. So unfortunately, this rock here is a negative test. It only looks metallic because it has iron ore in it, although it doesn't have enough of it to be attractive to a magnet, for example. Speaking of magnets, that would be the next test you would do. And to take advantage of the hook, it's worth remembering that by accessing the first link in the description, you can acquire the best and most complete gemology ebook for beginners in the world, where you can discover everything about identifying precious gems in detail with unique content you won't find anywhere else. For example, an exclusive module on diamonds. Years of study in one place at an extremely affordable price. But unlike gems, passing a magnet can be decisive in identifying a genuine piece because it would confirm several other tests like this one. If a rock sticks to a magnet, it has the potential to be a meteorite. In this case, it didn't stick to the magnet. I'm doing this magnet test last because it had many aspects that indicated it was a meteorite. But notice that it doesn't stick to the magnet at all. That's why we have to leave the magnet on a pendulum to see if it has any attraction to the magnet. It's swinging because of the wind. But unfortunately, it doesn't have a significant attraction. Even though it has iron ore in its composition, it should have a minimal attraction to the magnet, and it doesn't. But what does that mean? If it attracts the magnet, does that mean it's a meteorite? Because we also have this other rock here to test. And look, it sticks to the magnet. And for me, who's holding this rock here, I can tell you that it's quite heavy. But unfortunately, here we have a piece of hematite. And how do you know if it's a hematite or a meteorite? A hematite, if you find it, you're going to find several other rocks like it together. That's because hematite is the main derivative of industrial iron ore. So it has a lot of iron ore, which is why it sticks to the magnet. And this one, although it also has iron ore, you can see that it doesn't even have that iron sheen. Not even enough iron to attract the magnet. Maybe if I make a powder here, I can even attract an iron particle here. Some very small particles, maybe we can. That's right, it seems to stick. But in this case, look at the details. Sharp edges, incompatible. I even ground off a little piece of this so we can see. It's very reddish, very similar to this one. Both would have a metallic sheen if I gave them a light polish. But just by sawing the paste on the sandpaper, we didn't get the metallic shine. That would be a metal similar to this magnet here. So it sticks to the magnet, but it's not compatible with the shape of the meteorite. Sharp, broken, or shattered edges are not compatible with meteorites. This one actually had a meteoritic shape. It's very reminiscent of a fusion crust, but it's probably a natural erosion of the stone. An interesting tip, if you found a stone like this or one that looks like this in nature, know that stones like this are not meteorites. This one is even a bit lighter, because if you found stones with holes, cracks, or breaks in them, that's not compatible with a meteorite. That is characteristic of hydrothermal rocks or volcanic rocks. This one has these little holes in it. This is probably from a hydrothermal formation. That's why there are these hollow holes in the rock. So the first test you're going to do is the magnet test. Because if it doesn't stick to the magnet, you can discard the rock. And the last thing you can do is subscribe and activate the notification bell to get more videos like this for free on your phone. Because in case you didn't know, you can learn how to find diamonds by watching this video or by clicking on the first link in the description.